What's up? Welcome to Turbo World. How y'all doing today? TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. Am I right? Welcome to TikTok. Have fun interacting with your viewers in real time. Creators must be 18 years or older to go live. Remember to create a safe viewing experience for following our community guidelines. All right, we're going to start this day with this public disclosure of my own. This message, is, this message is public notice and free speech protected by our nation's constitution. Anyone who believes this message to be misinformation may, within 60 days of the posting of this video, provide legal reference showing any portion of this message to be inaccurate. And if we can verify that legal reference is applicable and valid, we will voluntarily remove this message. This message is for educational purposes and does not represent legal advice or service. Tober World Network is solely responsible for the content of this video. According to Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, the platforms which carry our content, TikTok, are legally transformed fair use media, TikTok, and our messages, TikTok, are not the content creators of our posts, TikTok, and are not responsible for the contents of this message in any way, TikTok. And therefore, TikTok, you have no right to label, suppress, or remove our content, TikTok. Anyone removing this message without our consent or without legal grounds will be subject to major monetary penalties, which apply fully and separately to all responsible parties and their organizations, TikTok. Any deformatory labeling or removal of this message by the host platform, TikTok, or any other outside party or agency, Google, or YouTube, without our consent const constitutes agreement to these terms. Any person representing this message as unreliable or removing this message or ordering its removal without prior notice to us and without authorization from us, will there thereby be agreeing to pay major additional monetary penalties for that nuisance, violation, and damage, TikTok. Our nation's constitution prohibits censorship of and interference with this message, TikTok. All further fair use information and disclosures are in the video that requires a human review, TikTok. All right. Now we're done with that. We got our public disclosure out of the way. I want to share with you. <laughs> Let's see how we can do this. Boom. Flip camera. How y'all doing? All right, we're going to play you a little something. You see what this says? You see what that says? Now this is me talking that they just muted. I want y'all to see this. Well, I see it. There are two types of creators on social media, the infringed and about to be infringed. If I had a video platform, I would honor my creators first and foremost. I would make sure not to waste their time with nonsense appeals since my platform would not be denying state and federal laws to please myself. My platform would not instruct creators to use non-copyright music so that I can steal their creations later. I know there are many creators like me that not only struggle for weeks to film, then to edit, then to share, that would greatly benefit from reducing the struggle on creator copyright harassment from the platform, and so that's why I am making the video. Not only have I found ways to overcome these federal violations of infringement, through the laws of fair use signed into effect in 1976 and the Communications Decency Act 230, 1934, enacted as part of the Communications Decency Act of 1996, provides limited federal immunity to providers and users of interactive computer services. What I love to see is these laws actually practice like at this platform right here. Come see us. Ay! Ay, 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 You heard that, you know what I mean? Bro. Okay, now check this out. This is insanity. This right here, everybody needs to know this. This is happening right now. This is the Economic Ninja on YouTube. I'm done. In parentheses, someone needs to make a stand. Parentheses. Um, Give me a like if you can relate to any of this. Give me a like. Give me a like out there. Let me know you're real. Holla, holla, holla. Okay. I have an email in front of me that I'm going to read to you. People are being, families are being destroyed. And uh, this this platform will not do anything to stop it. That's right. And I'm going to be the first. This is YouTube content creator to put a stop to this right now. Before I read this email, I want you to know that I have contacted every single content creator that I know and sent them the link to this video. 
time to take a stand. Families are being destroyed by scammers right now. They're being robbed blind. I told you the story of a subscriber's family that had a Thank you for the likes, guys. Thank you. Them a couple of months ago, and they contacted me. Economic Ninja channel, YouTube. Capital One 360 this is what I hate about YouTube and what I like about Rumble. Rumble gives you the commercials up front and they're done. YouTube keeps on throwing them at you. These thieves are in the comment section. We as creators can't even control it anymore. Call you now and using our voices. Now what I'm about to do, content. They're, they're, these thieves are in the comment section. They're using artificial intelligence to call you now and using our voices. Now what I'm about to do. Comments are turned content off. Content creators know this is essentially like channel death. But I'm going to read you this email of just one the other day, something that happened, and I'm asking for your support. I'm praying over this, just but I'm going to do this God, action right now based off of information I found out today. I was just there scammed at 300,000. Oh, God. To say that if you don't know thyself right now, and you're going to be caught up in a horrible, horrible world, in the next 12 months because of artificial intelligence and thieves that want to destroy you and hurt you. Yes, sir. They've already hit me. I have put banners on both of my channels that say right at the front of the thing, I will never ask you for money. I will never invest your money for you. Yeah, I remember seeing that. And this has to stop. Mm -hmm. and, and I will ask content creators to share this video. I'm pretty sure they won't because they don't got the sack. Oh, I got the balls, so baby. The, the one that does it. You know I got them balls. I got them golden wavos, them diamond wavos. I turn it off. My Indian heritage Obviously gave it to me. Names out so you don't see the their email, but you can see that it went to me. This is from someone named Steve. I'm trying to get it so you can Steve read says, the comments. Steve says I'm reaching out to verify something. I don't know if it's working. I'm a working. student on Teachable, Dadgummit. and I purchased get all this stuff out of two way. of the ninjas' courses. <sighs> Travis, in this morning's 13124 on, video, it's an older video, he's talking about YouTube video that one of his duplicate Travis voices voice to take money from a student. Um, right, is that good, y'all? Give me a like if it's better. I may have a similar situation, and the only way I could think to verify or validate my situation is to reach out to Travis here. Thank Do you, you mind for the likes. taking a few minutes to help me? He thought he was talking to an admin. I immediately got on and said, I can guarantee that you are dealing with a scammer. If it is someone saying it's me, I will never invest money for you Thank or you. ask for money. Mm -hmm. He emailed me back later that day saying, wow, me God either. watched over me. That's for sure. Amen. I'm so glad I heard your presentation this morning. And what you said about the one particular fellow, Thank Thank the you. scammer did the exact same thing. He called and left a voice message, sounded just like you. Oh, Think great. about how they're getting your phone numbers. Oh. I want you to understand how serious this is. Dude. And I'm telling you right now, I'm asking, before I eat, finish this email and what I'm about to do to stand up against this, you need to go on to every uh, content creator that you in the comment section and say, are you willing to stand up and do the same thing? Aye. I don't think they're going to. Woo. Because this is going to take a hit to everybody's uh, finances. Yes, sir. And I'll explain that in a second. But he said here, this, this, the. They put the Judy the chop on him. This the Ninja chop. The exact same thing. He called and left a voice message. Sounded exactly like you. Mm. He even talked about things that you had said on your YouTube channel. He's even using your logo on Telegram. They oh, do that on every single um, uh, platform out there. He and, and I'm going to share with you a conversation I had with my representative uh, I miss the beginning. What happened? on this platform uh, in a second. Let me see. He encouraged okay. me to All buy right. All right. Bitcoin and deposit it. All right. So what's happening is this is a YouTube platform. Now, I did a live stream, I guess, yesterday uh, complaining about how YouTube's flagging my copyright music and my royalty-free music and taking my videos down and trying to take my channel down at the same time. And how I'm trying to avoid it. And they're strategically making it so I can't avoid it due to the policies 
that are within YouTube. And it just so happens that a lot of the uh, flagged copyright music that they're using is generated by YouTube. Now, this is an AI construct. Now, he's talking about a different AI scamming construct that's also on YouTube. Uh, this is the Economic Ninja channel, and the title of it is, the video is called, I'm Done, Someone Needs to Make a Stand, in uh, parentheses. Uh, and so, and not parentheses. Uh, in, yeah, parentheses. And so, uh, he's talking about the comment section. Now, I've gotten eight spam calls. I got four a couple minutes ago, back to back, uh, I got six spam calls yesterday, back to back, that were the same number, and they apparently they're coming from comment section. There's some kind of AI program that allows that can get your phone number for the creators, the content creators of YouTube somehow, and so these scammers are using an AI program to do that, and then they're turning around and using another AI program. To carry on a conversation as if they are the content creator, a i.e. this guy, talking back to somebody. And so they're acting like, so say you have a scammer that's on the, that's making a comment on the Cletus McFarlane channel, and he makes a comment, and then he'll call one of the subscribers in the comment section and act like he's Cletus McFarlane asking the subscriber for money. So that's what's going on here, and that's what he's describing. I hope that gets you up to what happened there, Frederick. <coughs> I'm going to try to line this back up uh, on the comments, because the comments are really pretty good. Uh, you know, as usual, I like to listen to all the subscribers' comments and all the people out there, because you get a real good idea of what's going on in the world if you just listen. And so I'm going to try to just listen. But, yeah, Cletus is awesome. Uh he could be awesomer, though. <laughs> Couldn't we all? Uh, yeah, he's done a lot for the car community. He's making a lot of money. Uh, he's also taking advantage a lot, too. And there's a lot of tracks around here, including the one in Houston, that I went to four of his events to and watched Cletus pull up in front of my car, run his time, didn't ask me nothing, didn't even talk to me, didn't shake my hand, didn't even give me eye contact, just broke up in front of me after I was waiting the whole time to go up to the track. Now, I wasn't offended at first, but after... I did a couple more of his events. I got a little bit offended by that action just because of the way he's he was acting around me. Uh, yes, up to date. YouTube is Google owned and they own the big Dwarf company. I know much on this topic. Yeah, YouTube is Google. That's right. And they're both out of California. It's really interesting. And the point that we're making here is that TikTok is actually practicing more freedom of speech than this California owned United States company. Now think about that for a second. I'm on TikTok talking about YouTube, an American-owned corporation that's also the Google owns as well. Oh, Google owns YouTube, just like you said, and uh, of course Google. So what was their profits last year? Like three hundred sixty-seven billion dollars. Did you know about that? You know the you know their profits last year. It's insane. Like the the cost of data and the profits on data is insane. So let's watch the rest of this video. Into the Metro Capital Trading Exchange based in San Francisco. He has helped me every step of the way. Thanks for bringing I it up, Frederick. A little over Thanks for your comments. What's up, Chris? I learned a lot about crypto processing, that's for sure. He says, Thanks, thank goodness. Give me a I like. your program this morning. And I'll find a way to retrieve the $500 from the exchange. Give me a like if you can see these comments out there, if that helps. Thank you. I'm sorry, but I don't think you're going to be getting that back. He thank said, you. thank you, Travis, for your quick response and the warning. Yeah. Look forward to that. Uh, NASA's another conversation. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. I am turning off comments on Thanks both of my likes. channels immediately, and we'll be working on the third soon. Someone's going to take, take this to heart, and that's me. And right the on. truth is, I know because I've been told that if you don't pump these videos full of commercials, we won't share them. Yep. If you don't get tons of yep. uh, comments from YouTube, up, we you got told share that. Them. Yep. That's what they told you. They, yep. they threaten content creators. That's correct. So here's the deal. I tried to turn mine off and they God turned them back on. You're a freaking wrong algorithm. Yeah. Yeah. This has to stop now. Yep. It's going to get darker this year. Yes, sir. This AI, these thieves, these people that want to destroy you mm. are going to continue to do it. And it's going to get worse. Yes. It's going to end up on the mainstream media. It's going to end up everywhere. 
Thank you, Frederick. Thank you for the like. Back on YouTube. I mean, just putting them commercials in into worse spots, dude. Just like damn regular TV that nobody's watching. Everybody's sick and tired of watching these commercials. I just learned of a friend. Give me a like. Right right sick and tired of the commercials. That, them, that he ripped them off. I know what it's like to have people think that I stole from them. Yeah. And it's all made up. Yeah. Fabricated. You know, I talked to my assistant at YouTube and I said, I want you to tell me how to fix these scammers, these thieves. Why don't you take, get rid of them? They looked at me like I was crazy. They'd never heard of it. Uh-huh. At YouTube. Because they don't They'd do shit. they never heard that there they are don't do shit. scammers in there using my symbol and my name, even though there's not a check mark next to it. Trust me, they can do something about it. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down and I'm going to make a stand. Now, I don't expect any other YouTubers to do it, too, because it's going to hit their bottom line. Because quite frankly, to make money and just, you know, I really can't stand any damn YouTuber in finance that asks for begs for donations. Mm, I heard that. There's nothing that pisses me off more. Yep. There's a couple of them that come to mind yeah. right now. How are you going to give financial advice and, and ask for donations? <laughs> That's like Oprah and the damn rock talk about, hey, give us donations to help out these Hawaiian people. Man, donate your own damn money. We're over here starving, bro, ourselves trying to make shit happen. And, golly. Fuck. You know what I'm saying? So I want to show you something here. What he's talking about right now is YouTube. Now, I got something right here. I got a screenshot from YouTube on Twitter. And what they told me. <clears throat> I was talking to them about a problem I was having, and they told me back, they hit me back on Daggum Twitter, and they said, Team YouTube taking action includes terminating channels and kicking companies out of content ID. And then they say, We look into misuse of our copyright and web forms and take action up to terminate the accounts of abusive users. Now, I've got videos of five abusive users and channels and the daggum uh, proof that three of these guys that are abusers are YouTube animated music creators. That means that YouTube AI created the music and distributed it out there. As far as I know, that's what the words mean to me. If anyone wants to redefine that description for me, I will, uh, you know, I will take that into consideration. This is what they told me on Twitter. I talked all kinds of smack back and forth with Team YouTube. And they kept on turning around saying, no, we don't, we taking a, this abuse and that abuse. Okay, okay. And so, so I went ahead and screenshot a couple things that UMG did to me. So UMG hit me <laughs> with 201 days, 201 days. You ready for this? 201 days. It's funny how the AI in my graphics card has managed to minimize this photograph that was huge when I saved it. Thank you, graphics card. We proved that the graphics card likes to install and uninstall itself. Check this out. Dispute expires in 201 days. You see that right there? Huh? Right there. This was from She's So Cold Rolling Stones. The normal dispute, you can look it up on uh, <laughs> YouTube's website. You can look it up on YouTube's video about copyright dispute and appeal process. It's supposed to only be a maximum of 30 days. So right here, they were showing that Rolling Stones, they were giving Rolling Stones my earnings. Now, YouTube did this. Rolling Stones didn't do this. YouTube, the company at Team YouTube, gave Rolling Stones my video earnings for 220 days straight, it ended up being. And I took the video down. Because it was obvious that I, there was no, there's not going to be a counter notification. There was no way for me to appeal it, and they locked me out. And instead of the numbers going from 30 down to one, they went from one on up to 220, and they would have continued to be at like 300 now if I would have kept the video up. So I took the video down, I uninstalled it, I put it right back up, and I instantly appealed it, and the video is up and running and approved today on YouTube. That was what I had to go through with this video right here. This video is called "Why Is This the B? Why Is?" why this is the best beginner water to air intercooler setup this is twin intercoolers episode three i did three episodes putting twin intercoolers in my car I did air to air 
and a water to air combo. I did three episodes putting twin intercoolers in my car. I did an air to air and a water to air combo. That I think I hit a wrong button there. Uh, dramatically. So yeah, that was that. So let's get back to what he's saying and where we're going here. All right. <clears throat> so you know we already proved that they're liars, right? At Team YouTube, <laughs> which you already knew. About how to turn off the live stream comments, but I can tell yeah, you. Yeah, Twitter coolers. It's a Volvo, man. It's there. all they over can't. the channel. They're, they're, I have never yeah, seen you've it. seen it before. You you are new, so aren't you? When I figured okay, this out, that's cool. I'll figure it out. But my point being is that here's one. That we're building. Even the YouTubers in the finance. And then my wagon's outside this twin intercooled four cylinder 505 wheel. Stop. If they tell you they're a fancy stock trader, here we go. Figured out. But my point being is that those little one thing at a time. We'll get to the car. in the finance realm that ask for a donation. They're worthless. Stop. If they tell you they're a fancy stock trader and they ask for a PayPal donation, yeah. I'd kick them to the curb. Tell them to go fly to fly If they kite. tell you they're an important businessman and they live with their family still and they're real successful and they ask you for donations, I'd probably stop watching. Probably. We need men and women with integrity yes, in sir. this world. Yes, sir. Now yes, I know sir. what the consequences are of turning off these comments. Thank you for the like, Fred. And I'm okay with it. Thank you for the comments. You know, as marketers, as as content creators, yep. they know that you know we use that that pinned comment to sell things like I do, sell courses, not at the hand of people losing hundreds of thousands of dollars. I've been robbed. I've had twenty oh. something Bitcoin stolen from me twice. I've had thieves in the stock market, scammers. I've I've had it multiple times. Mm. Now, this is something I want to ask you to do, if you believe. Oh, I already know. I'm going to be in prayer over this next few days. I got experience, brother. And I'm believing for a complete demonic, uh, which that's what this is. Even humans that are uh, doing this, thieves, they're they're under the influence of Satan. They're that's allowing correct. it. Yes, sir. To be broken. Yep. We have four videos I think we put up this morning on Turbo World. Two words, one space. YouTube channel. You will only find our channel if you search in the YouTube search engine and change the filter to channel. Otherwise, we will never come up. You'll never see us. Because there are 24 other copycat Turbo World channels with spaces in them. And we have more subscribers than all of the other 24 combined. And yet, we don't come up until the second page when you change the search filter to channel. Tell me that's funny. <laughs> you know, they're only making us famous by hiding us so hard. And so that's what's awesome about it. And I'm asking those of you that know how serious this is, because this channel was started to warn people about thieves coming to take your stuff. Yep. During a crash, AI. A crash. And it could and be. And now we're going to go into the spirit realm. Could be just AI. You never and I'm going to be praying about this over the next three days. You and never know. We're going to break this in the spirit. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. The elites are laughing Look at, at this. You know, right you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. They want us to own nothing. And so you got to ask YouTube a question, and you got to ask at Team YouTube a question. And you got to ask all the music companies a question, and you got to ask AI a question. You got to ask Google a question. You got to ask TikTok a question. How many bites? Of that apple are you going to take before you're full? How many bites are you going to take out of each individual? Out of each individual's hind parts before you're satisfied and full? How many bites are you going to take from each creator until you're satisfied and full? Turbo World is me. Yeah, at Turbo World. Yep. That's it. We got the same logo as the, uh, you know... As the TikTok, uh, just without the number, you know. Uh, on Rumble, there's no space, Turbo World. We got two channels there because we're saving everybody a good seat. We knew there'd be so many people coming. Shoo! We had to make sure you had a good seat, baby. You know what I'm saying, Frederick? Shoo! So we got two channels up there. Actually, this is by accident. I'll just make a joke about it. Uh, I, I uh, emailed the Rumble creator, and he said that's normal. He said you upload to one channel, and it's your choice to share both. 
I made this selection to share both to the public, so that's why there's two public. Uh, yeah, yeah. Had to type it completely to see Turbo World suggestion. Yeah, yeah. Did you see all the other copycats? It's crazy. And all the all the ones that pop up before me that have like 400 and 500, 600 subscribers, 63 subscribers. You know, I put three, four new videos out this morning and you won't ever see them. You won't ever see them pop up before the other's new videos. So my new videos don't ever come up in the feed like the other Turbo World videos do. And you'll notice that I am at my original Turbo World email address that you just shared, at Turbo World. you notice I am the original because I have no numbers behind it. Everybody else has got numbers behind it, you know, at the at. That's because they came in later. They don't have their original Turbo World name. So that means that 24 other Turbo Worlds were created after mine. Isn't that insane? 24 other YouTube channels named the same thing. So yeah, it's getting increasingly, increasingly, increasingly harder to find us uh, because of all these tricks they're doing. And so some of these accounts are bot accounts. There's even a Turbo World account there out there that's got a song making fun of uh, $20,000 for hiring a hit guy to kill them. And I'm telling you what, uh, that song could easily be about me. And that song's been up, and I've, I've flagged it and reported it so many times for violating so many rules on YouTube. Uh, and, you know... Basically, they're talking about hiring a hitman to to kill someone for twenty thousand dollars, and that's because that's all they're worth. And you know, if you listen to the lyrics and listen to the song, you start to wonder: Is that song for the real Turbo World? And it's bot generated, and there's some real interesting comments in it. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. My first three suggested videos are four years, four years, and three years ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, it's it gets worse if you get on Google. Yeah, twenty one hours. Yeah, next three or one, two, and twenty one hours old. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's odd, isn't it? You know, they'll show the old ones and then. <laughs> yeah, the algorithm doesn't support us. I mean, um, I'm married, right? <laughs> and uh, I talk to my wife a lot. My wife a lot. You know, we live together because we're married. <laughs> And uh, she doesn't get my notifications most of the time. And, you know, she's subscribed to my channel. And so whenever she doesn't, she tells me. And I'm like, damn, you know, <laughs> damn. It's just odd having your wife as a subscriber and, and you have to go and tell her, hey, did you see my video? Because she didn't get the notification. <laughs> yeah, so it sucks like that. Uh, mm, mm, mm. And so what I'm asking, well, sadly, I don't expect much. You know, I, I I'll say this too. This channel got big because of Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah. But dude, I logged out of Facebook and into the wife's account. She saw four or nine posts. Small voices. Yeah. Into channels, and I did everything I could. Yeah. Some of them. I go um, into guest. I sign out, and then I go into guest. Yep. Taking more. Yep. Than I do it on the phone and the computer, them. and both show different. And. Um, yep. I see a lot of people that try and grow and it you bring up a good point uh, and I've, I've addressed this a couple times but I keep on forgetting to keep on addressing it a lot of these appeals that I have to do I have to go from phone to PC and PC back to phone because they'll blur out options or they won't allow me to click options and they play real rough they they they, they use the glitches to their benefit all the time you know there's never there's never gonna be a glitch to your benefit <laughs> right so it only come, you can only do it for so many years and just you come to the realization that they're not glitches anymore. They're all benefits for the other party. Uh, you know, if it was glitches, then there's some of them would go your way, right? They'd go both ways. Glitches, you know, they, they're glitches. They go both ways. Yeah, well, they're not glitches. So, you know, this is, this is programmed identity. And every time we go into any of these programs, we have to use what to get into them? We have to use Google to sign into them. So you have a choice. You can either sign into your identity your one identity. If you're me, you can sign into your eight different identities. And you can also opt out and choose guest and go in as guest and see what everybody who isn't signed into YouTube sees. So that means publicly. And you'll see a vast difference in each account as to what you can see, what you can't see. And it goes beyond Google. It goes beyond YouTube. 
It goes beyond TikTok. It goes beyond Chrome. It goes beyond Rumble. So this is another spam. Oh, no, that's not a spam call. That's David in the background. <coughs> With the car that I need to answer. Spam call. That's David in the background. <coughs> With the car that I need to answer. David is the owner of this car. And he's coming by to drop the laptop off so we can do some tuning on it. Uh, let's go outside. Let's go outside and talk cars, I guess. You know, I got a little Volvo wagon, 1993. I like Volvos. Volvos are cool. Get out of there. Uh, we did a little dyno sesh with it. It's a little four-cylinder turbo. 24.5 uh, pounds of boost. Made 505 wheel, 449 foot-pound of torque. I can't drive it at the track for squat. Uh, the best we could do with an 8 valve head on it was pretty weak because we were held back with the uh, stock ECU. That's not the that's not the dyno. That's the 8 valve dyno up there. Uh, we were at the stock ECU limits with stock stuff. So we trade we changed all the stock ECU. We put a micro squirt in it. And we put a 16 valve head swap on the top of the B230 red block. It's a four cylinder, 2.3 liter. They came with eight valves. But they made a 16-valve motor one year in 1991. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's what we got a spare 16-valve head down here. It's a holy grail. These things are really hard to find. Real hard to find. They only made them one year in the car. And I think they only made them one year in the boats, too, for Penta boats. So, yeah. That's what that's all about. Let's go out and look at the car. This is a 82242. I put a micro squirt on. This was an NA car. I put an intercooler on it. I put a new head on it. Uh, we changed the head up. This is a B21 uh, NA motor with K-Jet on it, which was a mechanical fuel injection. If you've ever seen mechanical fuel injection, it's basically like a toilet bowl that meters air. And then you have your four injectors uh, that are mechanical that open up at a set pressure. And then one cold start injector that's actually electronic. Pretty neat. We took that system off. We put a micro squirt in it. We put the newer fuel injected head on it. So it doesn't have the holes in the head itself. Because the old uh, mechanical fuel injection head had holes in the combustion chamber actually. Where the injectors went down into. And so this has the conventional injectors. Uh, we did the intercooler. Most of the factory stuff. We did a little bit of trick stuff here. But all the trick stuff's right here in this V70 turbo that came off a five cylinder. So we have a flat top B21 with high compression. And then the B230 uh, head on top of it. So this is a Frankenstein engine right here. One of a kind. That's the big turbo that came off my Volvo I used to run. Right? We got a picture of that over here. That's the old... Loctite. I used to call it Black Widow, but then a company of pickup trucks came out, and that's when uh, they were having an Eleanor battle, and they were trying to take YouTubers' stuff, you know, for copyright, for just name and cars things, and so I changed it to Loctite because I figured, you know, Loctite pretty much holds it together, rattles itself to death, so I got to Loctite everything. Thank you. Uh, it looks a little different now. I think it looks a lot better now. Let's go see. You tell me. <laughs> now, it's real dirty, and it doesn't have near as of a backdrop and we got people working on the neighbor's house next door oh, it's beautiful out today golly i should be out in the garden oh, the garden's over there i see i just immediately am magnetized to it all right let's go out here hey what's up david <laughs> let's just talk about your car and on the live feed <laughs> So this is, uh, this is what she looks like now. It's got a little precision power turbo on it, a little uh, 6678. We did some crazy stuff to it, even though it's precision. It's got an intercooler on the bottom, right there sticking out, and then another water to air that I put up here. And it's got two wastegates, twins. We got one down here with this pipe one up here with this pipe uh, had some friends welded up I'm not a very good welder and then you know stuff broke and then I had to learn how to weld <laughs> so it's a 8.8 in 8.8 .8 Ford rear end off of a Mercury Mountaineer wedged in here 
Still ain't got the e-brake set up right, but we're working on it. Um, drag radials. And she spins the rims on the tires. And we did it. We took it out to clean some cars. We could have hopped a damn Coke can. We came off the line so hard, jumped all four tires off the damn ground. Uh, but we broke a drive shaft and the car cut off. So that's why Bunny hopped. And you can see how much the tire's moving. I mean, this one's moving a lot. She's a lot of fun. She's got a T56 in it. I swapped in it. Four cylinder, 16 valve head. Uh, and we're going to do a lot more to it this year. As we soup this man's car up. Yeah. <laughs> so you got that laptop? Heck yeah. yeah. How you doing, man? I'm doing fine. Man. Cool, cool. Everything's good? Yeah, everything's good. Everything's wild with the computer in and the yeah. YouTube and all that, but we're rumbling it up, so whatever. That, that green screen looks good. Thank you. Yeah, man, it, it was so good. much trouble to do that. Yeah. Golly. Yeah. Dude, the computer crashed for almost a week straight. I lost count of like 200 and something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it looked good, though. Thank you. It's going to be a lot cooler when I do the fuel pump video. Yeah, yeah. But that one is crashing steadily right now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so the fuel pump's in there. Yeah. Uh, I got to do an adapter, and that video's done. Yeah. So it's just a matter of trying to get it out of the computer then. Yeah. But yeah. Well, uh, well, I'll talk to you. I'm going to go ahead and go home. Yeah. I got to go back to sleep. I hear you. I hear you. Snacks. Doing that night shift. Yeah. All right, man. Good seeing you. Right, We're going to show your car off some more. I hope you don't mind. No, <laughs> Take care. Got my Christmas decorations because I'm behind on everything. Okay, let's go in here. What do you think about the car, man? Yes, I do need bead locks. You are correct. Uh, those are fake bead locks. I got those wheels because they were the cheapest as I could find, and I couldn't hardly afford those. Uh, so this is David's car, the uh, guy you just saw. This is his his whip. Uh, I've known him for years and worked on quite a few of his vehicles, and this is how we met. You know, he had the Volvo, and I had to turn around. I was in the wagon. I turned around. I had the VGT turbo on it then. I had a uh, big John Deere VGT, this one right here. Yeah, we did the VGT. I built the linkage for it. Uh, built the diaphragms, you see. And we had another diaphragm on it uh, for vacuum. So it's a variable vein geometry turbo off of a <laughs> John Deere tractor. <laughs> so the veins move in the outer section of the exhaust wheel like shutters in order to control the velocity in which it spools up and i'm gonna tell you what we had that little eight valve performing like a damn stock v8 it was insane and there was nothing magical about it but that turbo that was it it was a stock eight valve on a stock ecu and it was making torque at the bottom unreal so i was like man let me put that on a 16 valve motor right well that was a huge problem with that the 16 valve motor it flows about twice as hard because it's not about the valve size to get that air to flow it's about how many holes you got for that valve flow because each valve only opens up like this much so the more holes you have the more airflow you have and a lot of people think well if you open the valve just a little bit more well that's gonna make it flow extremely a lot more no it's not it's gonna make it flow a little bit but when you change the lift the duration of the lift and when you change the amount of holes coming out of that head from 8 valves to 16 valves, dude, that change is phenomenal. It's like you change engine sizes. So when I took that turbo, that VGT turbo that performed phenomenally, almost perfectly on the 8 valve motor, and I stuck it on that 16 valve motor, I had something incredible happen. What do you think happened? Very, very cool. Love the stack. Nice touch. Uh, I should show I should show you what your channel looks like before I watch anything. Uh, makes sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Turbo World YouTube is where we started at. So we have all our old videos there. And then YouTube started blocking our stuff. And so we started going to Rumble. Whatever, you know, YouTube and TikTok kicks out of there. And mutes and blocks and whatever Facebook kicks out and blocks, we put on Rumble and we have zero problems at Rumble. So Rumble is the place to go. Rumble is the place for our best videos. We are untethered at Rumble. We are completely free to do as the United States law and the U.S. Constitution is able to do. We exercise all our freedoms at Rumble. That's why I push Rumble so hard. You can make money on Rumble immediately. I've already got $50 in the account. I just haven't cashed in. But Rumble doesn't pay me like YouTube because I have been doing YouTube for like 12 years now. 
I've only put in videos up for like seven years religiously doing the religious YouTube thing, how YouTube wants you to do it, you know, a specific time every week, you know, hold yourself to a schedule. That's what YouTube wants. If you don't do that, they're not going to promote you. So I've been doing that for seven years. And, uh, you know, the last four years, I've been more activist than I've been mechanic. Uh, because every time I share a mechanic video, they're trying to block it. You know, I shared a TikTok video of me starting a car and running it out here. That car that I just showed you, the wagon. And they damn muted it. You know, you can go down and look for it. They muted the video. All it is car noise. That's all it is. You know, they said somebody claimed copyright. Well, who the fuck owns my damn copyright for my car noise? Right? No one. I own it. I built it. I made it. It's mine. I own it. It's my intellectual property. So that's why I started with the disclosure at the beginning of this live. So, yeah. All right. Definitely weird. Definitely weird. It's just, you know, they're just, it's a little bit of AI and a little bit of corporate collusion because we talk about a lot of things that displease us. We talk about a lot of things that a lot of people don't want to talk about. So we're very opinionated uh, to some of these uh, corporations, right? You know? And so thank you for the like. And uh, so because of that, you know, we're, we're getting all the prizes. You know, we're getting the prizes that we earned. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I, I can't say I'm a victim. I'm not trying to play the victim because uh, I'm not a victim. I'm, I refuse to be a victim. And so what we, what we do is we use those platforms that do us wrong. When they do us wrong, we come back at them. Now, I didn't start this war with any of these people. You know what I mean? All I, all I did is started creating like these platforms said they were going to do. I was under the agreement that they were going to share my stuff like they said they, you know, like they advertised that they were going to do. And then I was under the impression that plagiarism was illegal. And then the more I got into it, the more I realized my copyright stuff was getting claimed. Uh, let me flip camera. So the more I did it, the more I realized, come on now. There you go. The more I did it, the more I realized that, uh, you know, I started using music because I realized how effective sound is and music is. I mean, quantum harmonics is a thing. It's a science. And so God spoke. And so there was a thing. And so God said there was light and there was a thing. That's quantum harmonics. There's science to that. That's... <clears throat> Somebody had to talk about this before they built it. Sound created this. Sound created this. You know what I mean? I use that to open packages. I hope they, um, they don't try to kick me off alive because I showed a knife. But that reminds me. They kicked me off alive when I showed my BB gun and I showed a video of my mom holding a rifle out in uh, the mountains because we use that for protection from bears and wildlife and stuff. And uh, I guess, you know, a platform like this has no perspective of those kind of people in the world. You know, that rely on uh, guns to live. Because let me tell you, a bear that climbs up and down a mountain that's rocky and climbs up trees every day, all day, is not the weakest creature in the woods. And so if you think you're going <laughs> to outrun, outmaneuver, <laughs> eh, better have a gun. So yeah, so we're you know we're getting all these prizes of so what we what we talk about on here. You know we've talked about quite a few corporations and the bad things that they do, and we try to give constructive criticism as much as possible. I'm not trying to start start fights with strangers. Uh, we catch things like Elon Musk talking about you know he wants to break the humans for good. We catch that. We recorded it off the Elon Musk channel. Reviewed that video. And 30 minutes later, Elon Musk channel took their video down. They were so embarrassed by our reaction. So you should definitely check that out. Elon Musk is a puppet. So is Tucker Carlson. So is Russell Brand. Uh, we've gotten video. We have videos showing them silencing us in live chats. Uh, Russell Brand. Uh, that Nate guy, that boxer guy. That everybody seems like he silenced us. Uh, he's supposed to be a freedom fighter. Some he wears no shirt and does lives all the time. I don't know. Weird. Um. So you know Russell, <laughs> Russell Brand, <laughs> stay free's ass. You know what I mean? You got stay free behind him all the time. 
Yeah, well, stay free, just don't talk on my channel. Okay, cool. You know, I asked him a question about uh, what the 333 meant on his wrist. You know, if that was the rank he was at with his Freemasonry. And he, <laughs> he muted me. So, you know, I mean, I kind of asked for it. But, you know, we, we share that stuff uh, with these people uh, and these reactions and stuff like that. And we do mechanic car work. Uh, we did the Envoy stuff where... We did this car, I built the electrical system and it's five times stronger. Um, I did the relays and stuff on it and the fuse box and the relays have lights on them, LED lights, uh, to let you know that they're good or bad and they're also waterproof. And then these are high beam and low beam relays. So if you get stranded and one of these relays stops working off the high beam leg, cause that's what I haven't powered up to. Then I have a spade plug that hangs out up underneath for each one of these relays that you could just jump over from the high beam leg to the low beam leg. And because the low beam le leg always offers power, even if the relay is faulty, you can get to where you're going without getting a tow truck or something like that, you know what I mean? And, and having to get a new relay. So it gives you time. And then the fuse box has LED lights on it because David's not exactly uh, mechanically inclined. You know, he's got his own specialties and his own talents. And, uh, and that's great. And so he doesn't have to know everything. And so it's my job to kind of protect him. And, and, and so I'm making this electrical system user friendly as I build it. And I'm planning for the repair as I build it. So I planned for the repair. I made it waterproof. Um, and then I made a protection circuit over the circuits if the circuits fail. And then I tested both circuits to make sure that they worked in conjunction on that uh, five times stronger video, the electrical video I put on YouTube, and I think I, I shared it on Rumble too, and it's got Kanye West in it too, and the Stronger song and whatever. And so we transform that music. We use trans, we use popular music um, because after doing this for seven years, uh, I think it was four years in, and I started getting problems using the no copyrights. I was strategically doing what, what everybody else is doing, you know, what, what everybody's supposed to be doing, using the no copyright music. And I had to appeal. I had to learn about the appeal process and I had to keep on appeal and fighting for these things, these videos that I was making, sharing this no copyright and royalty free music. And I thought, you know, if I got to go this, if I have to go through this kind of trouble, then why don't I just use the music that I wanted to use to begin with? If they're going to make me appeal every time I make a video, one and egg on it. I'm going to just use what I wanted to use to start with. Why not? And so I went big or, you know, went big right out the gate. And the first video I did was the Down With The Sickness song, Testing A the Theory. Because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Because these places aren't really transparent with their rules. They're very vague. And they do whatever they want because they make their own rules. And that's why they're vague to begin with. And so, Rumble's real clear, you know. <laughs> 15 gig download limit. What else you need to know? <laughs> real clear. I mean, how simple is it? But, you know... I spent at least two hours this morning doing appeals for my YouTube channel for videos that are three years old that are no copyright music. Why do I need to keep wasting that time? Well, I'm getting the viewers. I've already built the account. I've got 2,500 subscribers. You know, I can't punish them for things that are going on, you know, but at the same time, I can't punish myself either. So what do I do? I hold all these accounts and I share to each one of them. So I use them where they benefit. YouTube is really cool. The channel that I use for YouTube is really cool uh, in the effect of... <laughs> I didn't realize the other camera was not working. Sorry about that. YouTube's really cool in the effect of I have a bunch of playlists in there. And the playlists allow... Russell Brand said he was a Rothschild. I didn't know that. We need to be friends. Not many of us are this awake. Holla, brother. You, you right. You sure are right. There's very few of us. Uh, but actually... You know, there's a funny thing about that, too. There's more of us than you think because they like to hide us from each other. So when they hide me from you, they're hiding from you. And so that's what people need to understand about uh, infringement and blocking, okay, and censorship. Because they don't understand, a lot of people don't understand that when they hide anything from a platform, they're hiding that thing from everyone on that platform. 
So that doesn't mean that they're not just doing the person that they're hiding an injustice, okay? They're doing everyone on that platform an injustice, a disgrace, and they are embarrassing every American politician, every American citizen, and everyone who's ever heard of the United States Constitution. And that's what these platforms are doing. Now, these platforms don't care. They don't care. YouTube has gone so far as they don't even care about money anymore. They're shooting themselves in the foot by running these creators out like they're doing me by claiming these claiming these non-copyright songs to try to steal money from the creators. And the creators are going, you know what? You guys lied. You guys lied up front and said that this was no copyright music. And we went out and we used it. We did what you told us to do. And then you went back and decided that you wanted to copyright the music and so you copyrighted the music and then you went directly immediately after you got the copyright cataloged the music and went directly after everybody that promoted the music to get to where it is right now you went after every one of them and you cut the legs out of them you tried to steal all their videos you tried to steal all the earnings and what did everybody do everybody said <laughs> This is what everybody said. We're deleting the videos. We're going to Rumble. Just like all the muted videos on TikTok. If you have any muted videos on TikTok, you have any blocked videos on Facebook, you have any blocked videos on anywhere, anywhere, any kind of blocked video, I challenge you today to put those blocked videos, every single one of them, go find them, go record them, go pull them back up out of the block history, go screenshot them with free cam on your PC, whatever you got to do, get them back up and running, put them on Rumble. Make your channel, put it on Rumble, it's free, you can earn just as soon as you sign up. Get your screen name, get her done. Stop letting these platforms embarrass us. We don't have to take it. We don't have to take it at all. We are the people. We are the majority. We are the biggest government group there is. You see, you know, the government wants to tell you <laughs> there's a judiciary system. You know, these these three groups of government, and they don't ever they don't ever uh, consider the voters. They don't ever consider we the people, and that's the biggest group of government there ever is. So we the people control it all. What has been forgotten is how we the people have the power, and then that has been divided by these social platforms as they demean us and make us feel like we have nothing and no power and can't do anything, and then they try to divide us from our family and our friends. Facebook is not a social platform. Instagram is not a social platform. TikTok is not a social platform. These guys are withholding information. These are actual corporations that act like they're in the business of sharing you and me, and they don't share you and me. Now, what the hell does that tell you? What does that tell you? I mean, daggum. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for the like. Yeah, earn right away. Yeah. Uh, you know, I won a contest. The first video I put up on Rumble, 150 bucks. I, I don't even know what the contest was or how or whatever, but I won. I'm like, sweet. Appreciate it. Uh, I haven't cashed in on it yet, and that's all I've made on Rumble. Uh, I've been on Rumble only a year. I've only got like 64 sub followers or whatever. But for what from uh, from what I can see, 64 followers, uh, you know, I'm getting earnings. Like it took what a thousand on YouTube before I started earning. So I am earning. I'm earning pennies, but I'm earning. So it's already more than when I started at YouTube with nothing uh, in comparison. So. Why not? Uh, it's free. Um, okay, where's the backfall? Well, the backfall is the lives. You have to find all the all kinds of software and jump through all kinds of hurdles for lives. So you best just make videos <laughs> um, until they change that. And the other backdraw is only like a 15 gig uh, limit per video. So, you know, you might have to dumb down longer videos in the resolution or whatever. But yeah, earn immediately. No no limits. And so that's really cool. And uh, But the biggest thing about it is the freedom. But they have some lives in here because there's a lot of big channels that do lives uh, through other companies. There's my neighbor's Harley. Remember I told you about my neighbor's Harley? Look at him. Yeah. Yeah, 
Miss Nelson, Mr. Marine. Uh, so yeah, it does sound good. It does sound good. Uh, I compliment him about the sound too. But yeah, you know, it's a uh, it's a wild life. Everybody struggles with their own thing, right? So I don't expect anybody to feel sorry for me or anything like that. That's not why I do this. I do this. I let people know this because I feel like people need to we need to be aware. You know, I got a lot of kids, and uh, I'm a father, and I feel responsible, a lot more responsible as a father for strangers than I ever did when I was single and not a father, honestly. And so I think being a parent kind of, it does something to you. You know, it, it does a lot of things to you, but it, it, it gives you a, a discernment. And so the things that I experience, I feel like I need to share with other people to let them know how AI is affecting. It's already here. It's been here. Uh, it's affecting the numbers that you watch. Everything that you see on the computer can or can can be affected by AI. And it can change at any time. So you have to be very vigilant and on top of your stuff and consider the sources. If the sources have lied to you before, if the platforms have lied to you before, if they're lying to your friends and they're blocking your friends and family and they're blocking out spoken ones, well then you need to consider the source when they try to tell you information that you could base your life off of, like medical advice, for example. Just just throwing it out there, you know, because we haven't had any experience with that. <clears throat> so, bang, stick, pop, bang, stab, pop. <laughs> you know they had to force that on you they had to go to your employer and force that they had to make your employer force it on you so what does that tell you that tells you the, that the, your employer your boss runs this nation and your boss is responsible for this nation it's pretty interesting it was a pretty interesting chain of events that happened in the last three years and uh, it opened my eyes to a lot of things you know opened my eyes to a lot of things <clears throat> it definitely changes a man. Yes, sir. Sounds like he's right with you. <clears throat> Most don't realize all the AI is just a single quantum computer. The D-Wave at Google. I haven't heard the D-Wave. Now, I'm going to have to go look up that term. You, you, you're you teaching me something here. Uh, you know, I like to learn from everybody, and I like to think I can learn from everybody, and I like to think that people can learn from me, maybe. I like to think we can learn from each other. Oh, wow, we started computers before the net. I did too, but mm, probably not the same way you did. Mine's a more amateur start, you know, born in 76, and they started teaching us computers in middle school. Um, <laughs> I remember playing Oregon Trail in high school, going to the library and playing that. Uh, and then I started selling computers at Circuit City in 94 95 and i was horrified because i was selling things i didn't know how to operate fully i didn't feel confident operating them and so i had to learn <laughs> how to work the computer in order to sell it and then i started building computers uh worked for radio shack you know and there's all kinds of cool things in there you can build resistors and potentiometers and then i started dabbling in cars with potentiometers full and air mass meters and stuff to get uh hmm, different fuel maps and, and different amounts of power out of things that were only supposed to make a certain amount of power by changing fuel pumps and injectors and changing everything everywhere and just fooling it all um and so now i see ai doing the same thing with all our socials around us just like i was doing with cars I mean, it's like the same thing. They're fooling all the numbers. They're fooling all the sensors, and they're wagging the tails. So, to me, it seems like a lot of these music companies and stuff nowadays, they're using these numbers to promote the sounds. They're using the numbers that you see on these videos, the views and the likes, to promote those sounds. They're doing that by getting financial reimbursement, first off, and then that company takes the money and says, okay, let's flip this switch and change this number to this to make you think it's being seen this many times 
in order to get that out there. And it's a proven method. I think that the platform that I'm on right now does it in a completely different way and they do it in a more positive way, but it's still dishonest. They do it in a more positive way to reward you. So as soon as you post, you get 200 views, you don't have any likes, you don't have any comments, there's no activity. Well, that seems odd. To me, in my perspective, in my experience, if you have that many views and that many likes right off the top, or that many views right off the top, you're going to get likes, you're going to get comments. That's a lot of people. 100 people is a lot of people. Now let's put it in perspective. If I'm sitting in front of 100 people right now, and they're watching me, their eyes are on me, their bodies are physically in the same room that I'm in, this is going to be a lot different experience for me. I'm going to be a lot less relaxed. I'm going to, I'm going to be a lot more anxious. Um, I'm going to be different, right? It's going to make a difference. That's a lot of people. To have no reaction out of none of those people in there is very ironic to me. You're going to have negativity, you're going to have positivity, you're going to have all in between. A hundred people, one hundred people, one hundred people just walked through my house as I was doing a presentation and nobody said a damn thing. Is that real? <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't think so. Yeah, no kidding, you know. Yeah, definitely Walmart and Oracle bought at least part of TikTok, undisclosed percentage and cost. No kidding. Yeah, uh Yeah. And that's that's monopoly and that's government. That's uh you know, America Corporation at work. You know, there's the America <laughs> government and then there's the America Corporation government. So yeah, that's it's uh, AT and T's another one. You know, I was trying to get away from AT and T because AT and T is violating me pretty bad on my phone, violating. Uh, they're they're in a lot of my stuff and changing a lot of things. I've caught them several times, uh, changing my stuff. And so I want to get away from them. And so I was looking into advertisements for T Mobile because I used to have T Mobile and I kind of liked them. And then I had Sprint. I used to sell Sprint phones. I used to sell Verizon. I used to sell beepers before these phones were even out at Circuit City. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, Circuit City came out with Verizon, so we didn't start it, you know, we started selling cell phones. And Circuit City is now CarMax. Did you know that? CarMax is Circuit City. So Circuit City, when they paid us to work on the floor selling electronics, they would use the tags, and at the bottom of the tag, they would have these little SKU numbers, and the first three numbers of the SKU numbers was how much you got paid how much your commission was for that. So you could look down the tags no matter where you were at the store and know which product was going to pay you the most. And so people start asking you questions. Well, what do you know about this? Which one do you recommend? And, you know, the, all the salesmen had all the same reaction. Hmm, scan, hmm, scan, hmm, scan, hmm. Or if they were in that section and worked that section all the time, they already knew where to go right oh yeah let me take you over here to this one this one right here you see it pays me 99 bucks to sell you this boom box it costs 100 bucks <laughs> not really but you know what i mean <clears throat> and and so after you do that for a while and you get trained by these people circuit city uh they paid for my me to drive down from lunchburg to richmond in my car put me up in a hotel for two weeks trained me how to sell the best yeah i did it too and, you know, I felt so greasy after doing it for five or six years. I just felt, I felt dirty, you know, I felt dirty and I didn't like it. And so I got really good at it. I had a lot of fun. I met a lot of good people. I had a lot of good conversations. I learned how to manipulate people. That's what they taught me. They taught me how to manipulate people at Sears or not Sears, excuse me, at Circuit City. And so I went, you know, I worked all the chains. I did Best Buy, I worked at Sears, I worked at Sears at the Parks Mall in uh, Arlington. Um, I worked at Radio Shack in the Parks Mall in Arlington. I worked at Best, My, Best Buy on the other side of the street in Arlington from the Parks Mall. Uh, you know, I went all the way, I just got bored with it, and, you know, uh, I don't take much crap. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, you know how that goes. And so each one of these corporations has their own strategies on how to manipulate people to get you to sell them what the company wants you to sell them to pay you the most money. And it's all manipulation. 
So yeah, man. Yep. It's a scam. It is. Create the need. That's it. And you know, and so when I got into mechanics, uh, I got out of sales and into mechanics, I was doing a lot of in internship in mechanics. I was a shop down the street from where I lived in Arlington called Take It to the Streets Racing. And a guy named Ted Sickles owned it. And I would always try to go hang out there to get ideas on what the newest thing was out, what I could do with my car because I had a Volvo. And so I would go and look at what they were doing to other imports to get ideas for my car because they don't make shit for Volvos like they do for Hondas and Nissans and Toyotas. And so, <clears throat> yes, create the need. I do. We are the same in many areas. I went tech. You went mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I f Mechanics kind of made me go back into tech, too, because, you know, I started building computers, uh, building my own machines because, you know... I sold these computers for so many years, and I had so many customers come back complaining about the machines and this and that and the other, uh, and realized that they, they're all shit. They're all shit. They're all made to fail. They all have planned obsolescence in them. And so planned obsolescence is a uh, it's a factory construct. It's a uh, company construct. It's a corporate deal. And it's what's bringing our nation down. The damn planned obsolescence is what keeps us running around in circles instead of having time to fight for what's right about what's wrong, if that makes any sense. Um, and in other words, you know, I got an Envoy, 09 Envoy, uh, well, I had a thermostat go out on it. It's a coolant thermostat, you know, right? Yeah, Volvo is a strange one to race, but safe, man, and virgin alloys. So Volvo started a lot of these things. Volvo invented seat belts. Volvo invented O2 sensors. Volvo invented, invented Lombada sound. And that's the O2 sensor. That's how we save fuel in fuel ejected cars. Volvo invented uh, the seat belts and the Volvo cars. You know, Volvo has every, they have a boat industry, they have a tractor, they have a construction, they have a space industry. Volvo is on it all. On it all. But they lost their ass in cars for years, so they sold out. They sold out their cars to some China company um, recently. So the new Volvos. It's not even the same thing, obviously, you know. So I like these old Volvos when Volvo was still Volvo, when it was still out in Sweden, and they still use virgin alloy metal. And the virgin alloy metal does two things: it makes the car lighter and it makes it stronger because it doesn't have the metal impurities in it, right? All the impurities that, and so all this stuff that's in these old cars, all this stuff that's in these old cars, is first time cast. This isn't recycled metal. This is first time forged in cast. So this is virgin alloy, virgin aluminum, virgin steel, virgin iron. And because of that, they're a lot lighter and a lot stronger. And so they don't have to use as much material to make the strength. Volvo put a lot of thought into making a lot of quality in their cars. But they slacked on a lot of things too, just like all the other industries Due to planned obsolescence because they always want to see you come back. They want to see your pretty face frowning like a son of a bitch with your hand in your pocket, hand in the money. They love it. They love it. And it causes us so much stress and pain to go back and keep fixing the same things over and over and over. So getting back to the Envoy, the perfect example. Perfect example. GMC Envoy 09. It's got the inline six in it. That Vortec 4300, 4200. It's a badass motor. Nivlek uh, 57. He soups them up on his channel. He puts them in old hot rods. And these damn motors, he doesn't even have to go into them and replace a head gasket or anything. They make damn near 800, 900 horse to the tires. These little six cylinders in these, in these GMCs and these Trailblazers. Now they're insane. They're powerful units. Even in its stock in a form. The truck gets out of its way really well. However, there's a lot of planned obsolescence in it, and planned obsolescence is just what it sounds like. They plan for things to be obsolete in the future. By making plan for things to be obsolete in the future. By making things inside that product that will break in a certain time period. Now, when I was working for BMW out in Richmond, Virginia at Twin Star, out on Broad Street... I had two cars come in back to back, 325s, both of them. Both of them were one VIN number apart. That means one of them was number one and another one was number two. 
I knew this because we always had to write down our service tickets. We had to order our own parts. We were in charge of the whole deal as mechanics. So we got paid extra money. We got paid really good because we worked for BMW. Then we got paid even better because we dealt with WorldPack. We dealt with all data. We did it all. And we had one service manager, and all he did is talk to customers and talk on the phone. We did all the parts ordering. We did all the parts gathering, gathering. We did all the things that took place in order to find the parts, get the parts there, put the parts on the car. And so because of that, we got, yeah, yeah uh, sometimes it lags. Sorry about that, man. <coughs> I should be on TikTok actually looking at this right now, and I'm not. So why aren't I doing that? Let me do that. Get on TikTok here and look at my live and see how bad it is. That way I get a good idea of where to come back to and start from. Uh, live video? Where is my... You know, what, how, how come I can't find my live? Did he did he Oh. If you are a... Come on, man. Here we are. There we are. Okay. Are we there yet? <laughs> Here we are. Uh, video. All right. Okay. So I'm going to turn the sound down. There we are. So now we got the screen going. We got our live going. Look at me. Look at you. Look at me. Look at me. Look at you. <laughs> okay. Make sure it's not cutting out. Okay. So I was working at BMW and I had two cars coming back to back. Make sure it's not cutting out. Okay, so I was working at BMW and I had two cars come in back to back. There were 325s that came in the same week. And because I had to write the VIN numbers down, I realized that one was number one and one was number two um, in the VIN number sequence. And I was like, whoa. I see it cutting out. It doesn't want you to, it doesn't want you to know what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> Yep, definitely a coincidence, Frederick. Definitely a coincidence. So, VIN numbers, consecutive. Cars, same year, same model. BMW, bring more wallet. Mm-hmm. Both cars came in for coil packs. Both needed coil packs. Oh, the connection dropped. Oh, my goodness. Both cars came in for coil packs. Both of them need coil packs. I checked World Pack. World Pack said they had 24,000 in stock. They wanted to know if I wanted all of them. Of course, they were joking because, you know, I talked to the distributor of Whirlpack in Richmond, Virginia, all the time because I had order parts in BMW. He was joking. No, I don't want to order all of them, but I do need four. Four? Yeah, four. Yeah, I got two different cars, back-to-back -back VIN numbers. Both need the same coil packs. Light click. Why are there so many computers? On these new cars. Well, they replaced the relays. You see, cars don't have relays anymore. They decided that that was too simple. That was too easy to replace. They don't have these boxes anymore. They have modules. And these modules are computers. And these modules have computer chips in them along with relays. The computer chips are there to record data. The data is recorded, the data is given back to the manufacturer, the manufacturer takes that data and interpolate, interpolates it to know how much they need of what part, where, how many. So BMW had all these modules in their cars and they know how many times you flip the windows, what degree it was outside when the windows were flipped, down to the second in time of when you did it, some of these cars. When I was working there, I was amazed. Like the records that they hold inside of them. Holy cow, that's insane. But it's really helpful, you know, when you're trying to troubleshoot a cold start problem or something like that, you can, man, you can really get in there, you know? Yes, your cell is completely downloaded when it connects to your car. It came out in the U.S. court case. I don't know what you mean about that. Yes, your cell is completely downloaded when you connect to your car. It came out in the U.S. court case. Tell me more about what you mean, man. 
I, I'm curious to what you're talking about. I, I hadn't hadn't heard about that one. <laughs> um, yeah, so some comments in this live are filtered to protect the community's experience. That's such horseshit, dude. I'm sorry y'all are getting censored, man. You know, go to Rumble. Go to our Rumble Turbo World. It's one word, no space. I have two Rumble channels because I'm saving a good seat for you, baby. You know, we can't be having this violation, this censorship around here. And if people are trying to talk to me and you're obviously getting censored. That's crap. You, I mean, TikTok just told me. They gave me a message saying, and, and I'm sure Frederick's trying to tell me that myself, I, I see what he means now. His cell was completely downloaded when it connects to your car. It came out in the US. So I guess he's saying that the new cars, they link up with a cell phone. Um, that makes sense because a lot of them run, uh, what the heck is that damn cable called? They run a cable through the car that connects to everything and makes it a bear for some of the new cars to modify because that cable connects all the modules together. And if you take a module out of the system, well, the whole system goes crazy, you know, and it's all designed for planned obsolescence. So you can't tweak with it. So mechanics can't do what they do. Mechanics aren't allowed to do mechanicing anymore. I don't know if you've noticed lately, but if you think about a mechanic and what they did 60s and then 60s, 50s, 70s, and think about a mechanic and what they do now, they're two totally different people. They're two totally different careers. A mechanic back in the 60s are replacing brushes on alternators, taking alternators apart, taking starters apart, rebuilding these parts. A mechanic now takes the alternator off the car, the starter off the car, and goes and pops it on the counter and gets a new one. While the industry that takes that old core charge, that old core part that you plopped on the counter and gave back to that parts store, they take that old part and they do what the mechanics used to do in the 60s. They put the new brushes in it, they put the new bearings in it, and then they resell it after they put that new rebuild spray paint on it. Here you go. Here's your $200 part that you just gave back to me that only needed $20 worth of parts in it. It needed new brushes, and it needed a new bearing on the front. You're not a mechanic if you're taking parts off a car and putting parts on a car that are the same. You're not a mechanic. You're a parts thrower. Parts throwers go to the same dealership, go to the same auto parts stores, and they're all the same. Because planned obsolescence requires these parts stores to make these parts under these conditions. So even when you go and you say, I'm not going to go to the dealership and pay $369 for an oil cap, a valve cover cap, a valve cover gasket, and a crankcase ventilation kit, I would rather go down to O'Reilly's and pay forty nine dollars for all that. Don't be fueled, don't be fooled. You're not gonna get nine times out of ten. You're not gonna get better quality at O'Reilly's versus the dealership. The difference in the two is the dealership part that you took off that vehicle that broke. You know how long that dealership part lasts. You have a good idea of how long it was made to last. By looking back at the history of how new that vehicle is, the years that that part has done service, that's a pretty good estimate of the years it's going to last if you go to the same place, the dealership, and get that new part. It's going to be pretty much virtually, virtually that same part. And that new part is going to have that planned obsolescence in it. Again, that water pump, that alternator, that starter. <laughs> and so you're going to have to replace it in the same amount of time, the same wear and tear, because they were designed to do that. They were designed to only have a service interval of seven years, eight years, nine years. That's planned obsolescence. So, back to the Envoy, my wife's car. She drives it primarily. I drive it occasionally. Um, she drives it every day. So, last summer, a uh, check engine light came on and the AC stopped working. And I'm like, I don't think those are related, honey, but I'll check it out. And so I get in there and I check it out and it gave me a thermostat code for the engine coolant. Uh, the thermostat, basically, if you don't know, it's a little uh, metal valve with a spring on it and the spring heats up and when the spring heats up, 
the valve expands or the heat expands the spring and opens the valve to let the coolant go through the valve to the radiator and back through the motor and so it closes and opens closes and opens due to temperature to keep the pressure in the system uh, it's called recondition I call a call I coming <laughs> yeah recondition yeah for the starters and stuff that's what they that's what they call them too recondition um, technically so that thermostat that takes the heat from the spring opens the valve and then it closes it when it when it gets too cool so that that pressure can because pressure cools so the water cools and the pressure cools but the water won't cool without pressure so you have to pressurize it so it builds about 10 8 to 10 pounds of pressure in the coolant system and that water is just pressurizing and it's what it's doing is it's taking all the temperature taking all the heat out of the motor and transferring it to the radiator and when it does that the valve closes the passage of the water stops and stays stagnant for a second so that the air could come through the radiator and cool I have to go bro good chatting with you heck yeah man thanks for stopping with us thanks for hanging with us and uh We'll see you on the flip side, Frederick. Appreciate you, brother. I'm going to have to check out your page when I get off of here. Robert Jones, how you all doing? Hey, have a good one, Frederick. Um, and so anyway, that thermostat stopped working, and it caused my AC to stop working. And they built that into that ECU. There's a deal in there where if the thermostat, the engine gets, if it goes below a coolant threshold or above a coolant threshold, the AC stops working. And so it was running cooler than it was supposed to by three degrees. And because of that, the AC wouldn't get power. They built that into the fucking equation. And I'm thinking, one of these doesn't have anything to do with the other. You know, if your motor is struggling, then you got enough common sense to go over there and turn off the AC, I'd hope. Right? Well, this car does it for you. It says, no, we're going to turn the AC off. Well, tell me a situation where your vehicle's running too cold and it's harmful for you to be running the AC. Tell me what that looks like. What does that look like? It looks like nonsense. That's what it looks like. If the car is too cold to run, then it shouldn't be running, right? Then you should have a disable alternator switch, right? If it's harmful. If it's harmful for that belt to pull additional torque off that motor because it's running three degrees cooler, nah. That dog don't hunt. So there's really no reason, no logical reason, no rational reason why GM, why GMC would make a code and make a program in their factory ECU for the envoys and the trailblazers and the vehicles like that. When the thermostat stops working, their climate control stops working. That means you've just now disabled a state inspection Something that'll fail state inspection in Virginia, you just disabled it. You've just made that vehicle fail state inspection because it needed a thermostat, a coolant thermostat. Now let me tell you how. I used to do state inspections for Virginia. I used to work on state police cars in Virginia. I used to work on fire trucks in Virginia. And community motors in Louisa County. They were an old Chevrolet dealership was the first place in Louisa County where you could actually drink alcohol. And we had historic buildings on the property that we worked out of. And that first building that you could drink in alcohol in in Louisa County was where we did our big truck service, our heavy trucks, our fire trucks, because they're massive. Um, so I lost my place again. <laughs> State inspection. Envoy, thermostat, climate control, got it. So GMC made this code in the ECU so that you can't use your air, air conditioning when the thermostat fails. So what happens if you're in the state of Virginia and you go for a state inspection and they go to check your fucking defroster and it doesn't work? You fail inspection. Now, I wasn't in Virginia. I'm in the state of Texas. And Texas doesn't care about defrost. Because it's not an issue. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> it was a couple weeks ago. You know, we dipped down to 20 degrees. No, it was like 18 degrees, I think it was. It got down to here. And we froze for two days. But that was weak. That's weak sauce compared to Virginia and what we went through. Cold climates and blizzards and whatever. But there's a lot of people that don't know how to live through this stuff in Texas. 
we had a lot of people die last time when the power went out because they didn't know how to work generators and then the people that did know how to work generators didn't understand that you couldn't have them in garages and then there was others that died because they were sleeping when the power went off and they didn't know that the heat went off and they woke up dead you know uh, because it was 15 it was 12 degrees i think it was a couple years before in houston and it was a big deal it was a sad deal and so i made a lot of videos on youtube and uh, rumble and uh, some on tiktok too trying to just help people out stay alive bro you know and, and there's a lot of things that we don't know and it's okay not to know and you know, don't be embarrassed by you know, not knowing a thing we all can't be professionals with everything but we all can offer a little bit of knowledge to each other so that we can all grow together and unite together and I think that's what this world's about, and that's what our purpose here is for. And so I can't just stand back and watch people get violated and censored, and, and I can't have that happen to me at the same time without saying something about it while I'm wrenching, while I'm living my life, and while I'm being a dad. You know what I mean? And so I feel a, a certain responsibility of sharing, because I'm a father, of sharing what I know to try to help others so that they don't have to pull all their hair out like I have. You know? Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. So we've done this live here for a while. Uh, we talked about cars. We met David. David came by and dropped off the laptop for this unit right here. We got a new green screen video with this car right here. You can obviously tell we got it set up for that. Um... Well, it's not set up very good now. There's a lot of wrinkles in the green screen because I walked by it and I'm just not using it right now. Uh, but we did a cool green screen video up on Rumble Turbo World. No numbers, one word, no spaces. Rumble Turbo World, we got two channels. The Rumble Turbo World that has the deal up here, like the icon right there, like my little icon right there with the turbo and the earth in it. Both channels have that, but one channel has Turbo World written in front of it. The channel that has the Turbo World written in front of it, both of them are mine, but the one that has Turbo World written in front of it on Rumble is kind of set up like YouTube, where there's a bunch of channels all, you know, in little square boxes on the page, kind of like the YouTube setup, and then the other Rumble channel has just the icon, like what it has right here, and the difference with that is it's listed video by video on a page. That's the only difference. That's all it is. Uh, so not a big deal. Subscribe to either one that your preference is. You know, some people prefer the list, and other people prefer the, the box, big window with a bunch of videos in it. It's whatever you want, you know what I mean? We got those videos there. Uh, we did the Economic Ninja video that he shared this morning, showing the new scams and the scammers that are on YouTube for the content creators. They're using AI in the comments. They're getting these content creators' numbers, and it's only a matter of time before they hit these other platforms as well with this AI technology uh, they're using AI technology to get users and creators numbers and commenters numbers and comments and then they're contacting uh, people in the comments perpetrating like they are the creator of the channel by using another AI program for voice and then entering the conversation and sounding just like the person and people are believing it, and people are falling for it, and people are giving money for it. And then we discussed the other AI thing that I'm experiencing here lately of uh, AI in YouTube. Uh, my YouTube channel is going to be removed. It's only a matter of time unless someone stops it that's at YouTube or at Team YouTube. It's going to be removed. They're, in, they're on their way. They've already uh, made me delete two of my videos that have no copyright royalty free music in them last month and i got a strike for trying to fight now i'd fought like a numerous amounts of these and won and last month was the first time that i lost one of these non-copyright battles with a non-copyright royalty free company and then the second time they came up man i just i just took the video down I didn't even appeal it. I'm like, if y'all are going to play dirty, I can't afford another more strikes because y'all are playing dirty with non-copyright music. I'll just take the damn thing down and I'll put it up on Rumble. You know, why should I help you make more money while you're trying to steal from me? Like, it's... 
How dishonest do you have to be to be a corporation to get so involved that you're making your own music and telling your subscribers to use it and then three years later coming back for that music going, you can't use that, give me the money. How many bites of that fucking apple do you have to take, right? How many bites of that apple do you have to take as a music company, from a music company's perspective? How many bites do you take out of the apple before you say, that's enough, I'm full? They don't ever say they're full. These music companies shoot themselves in the foot. This whole industry is upside down and backwards. You can't promote music and have people love your music and have fans love your music and promote your music and share your music and then after a while come back and rip that rip that music right out from your fans and take the creations and everything and the earnings with it. That's not how it works. Apparently, that's how they think it works and that's how it's been working because music companies are cutthroat. So I've been winning with the music companies, losing some, winning some, winning some, losing some. Well, it's become apparent, you know, that now they're after my non-copyright. So they hit me with three more last week. So I have to take these down and I have to put them on Rumble because I can't afford to have three strikes. Else I won't be paid. I won't be paid. I won't be paid. And, you know, I don't rely on these earnings. But here lately... I have come to rely on these earnings for my kid, for what my kid needs, because I can't normally afford what I can normally afford that my kid needs. Because everything's to the roof. And everybody knows this. You all are feeling it. Everybody in here in this room is feeling it. Give me a heart. Give me a like. I guarantee you you're feeling it. You know, you go to the grocery store and ain't nothing under damn five dollars. <laughs> like, what in the world, dude? You know, give me a like if you feel that grocery hit. The prices of inflation, the prices of everything going through the roof. You know, the taxes on my house have gone through the roof. Now they're valuing my house four times the value it was when I paid for it four years ago. So now I've got to pay four times, you know, the tax that I did before. So now, you know, I'm paying a two car payments just on the tax on my house. You know, when I moved in here, I hadn't planned on that in the budget. I hadn't planned on my damn mortgage going up 800 bucks. A month. I hadn't planned on that. I thought the value was a good thing. Well, it's a good thing when you cash in and you go to sell your house. But up until that point, you got to pay in to get it back. It ain't nothing for free. You're paying it to get it back. You're paying that value to get it back. You're not pulling the value out of that land out of nothing. And so it's a rent basis, you know. I'm just renting. I'm not a homeowner. Nobody's a homeowner in the United States. Everybody's renting. Everybody's renting. You pay tax, you're renting. Period. And they change that tax and whatever they want. And the funny thing about that tax that they change, I never had anybody come out here to my house and walk my property and go inside my house and then appraise it. But somehow they're telling me my value is going up. I made a video about it. TikTok took it down. Welcome to your new house. This is how much you think you're going to pay. It's just like YouTube. You know? Welcome to your new copyright music that you can use everywhere. We won't claim it. This is what you want. Now you can use it. Oh, it's awesome. It's so great. The comment section's lit. Oh, thank you for this free no copyright music. That's how you get them. Every copyright song you use, leave a comment. Thank you for this free no copyright music. That's how we get them. That's how we call them out. That's how we show them how greasy they are. Thank you for letting me use this no copyright music, but you put positivity in it, right? Because now they're responsible. Now there's identity. Now there's identity to it. You are responsible for this music. Thank you for letting me use this music. Thank you for making this music. Thank you for allowing us to use this royalty-free, copyright-free music. I look forward to using more off your channel. Welcome to your new house. You thought you were going to pay a nickel a month. You're going to pay this after three years. Because they valued your taxes, and then your, your property value has gone up. That's a great thing for you. It's so good. Oh, awesome. That's such good news. Thank you so much. You are great. This is great, man. We sell the house. We're going to get so much money. Next month comes around. 
your taxes went up $799 because we valued your property at such and such increased value. Well, that's freaking weird, man, because who are you? When did you come out here? When did you walk this property and say, yes, that's what it's worth? Well, you have an appeal process. You can appeal your taxes. So we did. Guess what happened? Nothing. <laughs> You know, it's, it's just like dealing with the government, anything with the government. You fill out this paperwork, fill out this paperwork, fill out this paperwork. Jump through this hurdle. Jump through this hurdle. Jump through this hurdle. Are you pissed off yet? Well, you shouldn't be pissed off. That's You should be able to deal with your feelings. Jump through this hurdle. Oh, it upsets you. Oh, well, you're going to probably need counseling. You're going to need this hurdle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's perfectly normal. Jump through this hurdle. And by the time you get jumping through the hurdles, man, you're about numb. That's what the government does to you every time. So now corporate America is doing the same thing. You need to jump through these hurdles. So I got a home warranty company, right? I got a home warranty company with people walking in and they're pissed that work for the home company, for the home warranty company, because they're subcontractors. So <laughs> these home warranty companies, home warranty companies, are not home warranty companies. These companies are repair companies. These are repair companies that strategically subcontract out work and make you think that they're giving you something and they ain't giving you a damn thing but hard time. And they're giving the employee a hard time that they brought to your house and they're giving you a hard time when you're in the house. And I know because I've dealt with it about 500 times. It's sickening. Sickening. I get people coming into my house that are pissed off to be there because of the job they just did they didn't get paid anything for. And rightfully so. Rightfully so. And now they're at my house going, how the fuck am I going to get ripped off this time? And what is this asshole that owns this house going to do? You know, how pissed off is he going to be at me because this company's doing shit, right? So I got a repair guy from a home warranty company that got called out there for the home warranty company. And then I'm a homeowner. And then the company that's supposed to cover my home warranty stuff, well, they're nowhere to be seen, right? No face, no identity, right? We know the name of the company. No real face, no personal face, right? So there's just me and him. So we have to get on the phone with the company every time we need something. Okay, so he gets on the phone company. This is what I found. I found these pipes are leaking. This amount of pipes needs to be replaced. But I recommend to replace all the pipes. And the company comes back and says, ah, you know, you can replace the hot water heater, but only replace this amount of pipe. Okay, cool. Uh, so, you know, the guy comes out, gives you the quote, gives you, you know, what the deal is. He comes out and checks out what the deal is. He calls the company. You give him his 60 bucks and he leaves because that's the copay. Guy comes back and says, okay. He calls back from his company. The company calls back. Home warranty company calls back and says, okay, it's going to be $699 for the water heater. We got it covered. We got it over at Lowe's. It's on sale. It's the cheapest hot water heater, but it's still an upgrade for you. Here you go. I'm like, thank you. Cool. Nice hot water heater. Upgrade. A little bit more BTUs. A little bit more solid. Neat. I get a bill for 900 bucks. You owe 900 bucks. I thought y'all paid for the hot water heater. Oh, yeah, we did. We did. We, we, uh, the home warranty paid for the hot water heater. They got that at Lowe's. Um, and then the, the plumber came out and they put the hot water heater in. They got two guys. They carried up the stairs and then carried up the stairs to the third floor to the attic, put the hot water heater and put pipes in, replaced the pipes. Uh, all that labor was $956. I could have gone right down the street to any plumber, anywhere, and right up to Lowe's with my own money, my own 900 and some dollars, and got that same hot water heater, and got another plumber, or the same plumber, and got that job done for the same amount of money out of my pocket. You didn't do me any favors. And they do it every day. They do it every day. And they, that happened to us. That happened to us uh, last month. Last month that happened to us. You know, the warranty company comes back and they say, oh, we're doing you a great favor. You know, it's only $959 you got to pay. And I'm doing the price estimate ahead and I'm going, this doesn't add up. You ain't saving us no money. You made us pay for the whole damn thing. All you are is a repair company. You're not even a warranty company. You're out here distribu distributing labor and just capitalizing the F off of it. Screwing your employees, screwing the people that paid for the service and not offering any service. And you're just capitalizing. Welcome to corporate America. Welcome to your new house. Home warranty's great. Now, I've had had a, a quite a few occasions 
where home warranty did pay for stuff, like my pool pump that went out, like my sweeper pump that went out. These are all planned obsolescence things. And guess what I did? I kept the pumps. Absolutely. I'm going to replace the damn bearings and brushes in them. Absolutely. I'll make my own power generator. You know, I've got a plan right now that I've already developed. I've already put it up on YouTube. I've put it everywhere else. People are like, whatever the fuck, free energy doesn't exist. Bullshit. Free energy exists every day around us. You got water, you got sun, you got air. This is free energy, okay? Look it. This is an RC car with a little motor, okay? You see this little motor in here? I took this little motor. This right here is a little axle for an RC car. Look at it. It's like a bolt. My bit driver fits directly into this bolt, my bit driver, okay? So I stuck my bit driver in here, and I spun this thing backwards like this, and I hooked up my voltmeter to this. Guess how many volts this little motor makes with my bit driver on it? So you got a gear reduction motor, electric motor, it's gear reduced, or, you know, it's geared, right? So it spins a lot faster if you spin it than it would normally spin if you spun it by hand, because it's geared. So I put my bit driver on the end of this axle, and my bit driver has a 12 volt battery connected to it. This made 12.7 volts coming out of it. This little tiny motor made 12.7 made 12 volts. Now the importance of that is this. This might not make the amperage to power that 12 volt bit driver, but it sure does make the power to keep that 12 volt bit driver battery charged. So that's not free energy, but it's free charging energy. Okay, so now you have a bit driver with a battery with a wires hooked up to it that can charge every time it's on. It's charging the battery every time it's on and draining the battery at the same time. Okay, so you have an effect here that's cycling. Picture that. It's cycling. It's on its own. Okay, we're not generating any power yet. We're just charging the system. Over here, we have something still spinning that we could put another geared motor on to generate extra power. Outside of the charging system, this is free power. So people like to take, I'll do an example here. People like to take uh, a motor, right? Let's just imagine that this is a big electric pull pump motor. They like to take a motor and they'll have this size pulley on it, and they'll take another electric motor with the same size pulley on it, and they'll wire them up back to back. And then they'll turn to one pulley, and the other pulley will start turning another motor from the power. And you've seen this, right? But what you haven't seen is people you and you've seen this, right? But what you haven't seen is people using technology. If you take that motor, this motor right here with this pulley, and you gear it up. And expand that pulley twice the size. Three. I don't know the math of it, but I know there's math in it. If you make a different gearing for that first motor that drives the second motor to power that motor, and you spin that motor that's generating the power twice as fast, you make more power, you make more amps. Due to gearing, free energy is possible. Due to pulley sizing, free energy is possible. But nobody, everybody's using the same gears on both motors you got to use different gears. The power motor needs more amp to spin the motor to make the power. So you have to gear that exponentially so that that power motor only spins a little tiny bit in order to spin that power generating motor a full revolution. And this is how you get free power. I don't know why people haven't done it. I know why I haven't done it. I don't have the time or the money. I've got two motors back here that need to be rebuilt. And I've got to research them, but right now I've got cars that need to be worked on. You know, I've got two cars out here. I've got an Infinity that i got to fix. It's got a charger problem, and it looks like a ground, a ground problem and a starting problem. And a flooding problem and fuel problem. And then, you know, i got this Volvo out here, and then i got a head gasket on my wagon to do. You know, it's got a minor blown head gasket. I still drive it around 20 pounds or whatever. It's, it's minorly blown. It'll start overheating if I don't turn the fans on. So I know it's blown. I haven't even done a compressor check. I already know. I already know. And it's due. It's a metal head gasket. It'll start overheating if I don't turn the fans on. So I know it's blown. I haven't even done a compressor check. I already know. I already know. And it's due. It's a metal head gasket. due. It's a metal head gasket on it. Hell, it's been on there five years. I've dogged the crap out of that car. And it's been wonderful. 
well, it's time to do the thing. And when I do the thing, I'm going to pull the motor out and I'm going to put that bottom end cradle on it from overboosting. And we're going to really sing some song to that thing. We're going to break that, we're going to break that, break, we're going to break the crank in half, we're going to break the block in half, I don't know which. Um, but we're going to do some crazy stuff. We're going to do some wheelies in that car. We're going to do some four-cylinder four, wheel, four cylinder wheelies like the world hadn't seen before. And not a lot of people out there bringing four wheels, bringing uh, four wheels off the ground in a wagon, and I've already done it. There's not many people out in the world bringing four, bringing the front two wheels off the ground in a wagon. I haven't done that yet. Well, I've done it, but I haven't done it on camera. So it doesn't count. So I ain't even going to mention it. Anyway, that's what's going on. So I got to go. I got to go get to work. I hope this, I hope this motivates you guys to make to try your own free energy machines. You know, I, I hate going on a lot of these sites and having these guys say, there's no such thing as free energy. It's not going to exist. You know, all you're doing is you're negatively affecting the community and telling everybody to give up. Just have an open mind and just try it. You know, maybe you'll have different results. Instead of going around passing a word around that you heard somebody else say, that you hear that they heard somebody else say, if we uh, if we relied more on our experience than we did what we hear, this place would be magnificently changed. Uh, and so I'm trying to do more of that. As I grow, I try to help others grow. I don't have all the answers, but I really appreciate y'all sticking with us and having fun with us. I really appreciate the conversation. Um, it says, great job. You're going live for 90 minutes. Don't forget to take a break. I am taking a break. I'm getting the heck off. We're going to go ahead and get off of here. I'm going to go in my live studio later, and I'm going to record the lives like I've been doing, and I'll put them all on Rumble. I've already got uh, two on Rumble I put up this morning. I figured out how to do it. TikTok Live Studio didn't want to allow me to do the download. Let me show you. This is the studio right here on the deal, and they have this little deal right here where you can download, right? Well, it's funny because when I hit that, it just sits there and processes all day. So I had it sitting there processing all day for like three hours, and they wouldn't do it. So I went in there and screen recorded it with my free cam. Screen recorded it, played the whole thing all the way through, recorded it, and put it up on uh, Rumble, Turbo World, no space, one word. And uh, it's up there now. So if you want to see any of our live feeds or any of our muted videos from the TikTok from the YouTube, from the Facebook, all of our block videos, all of our censored videos, all of our muted videos are on Rumble. I would suggest you do the same. Take all your muted videos, all your block videos, all your censored videos, put them on Rumble and start earning today. What is it going to hurt, right? It'll be an ultimate insult to the platforms that blocked you when you start accumulating earnings on the videos that they wouldn't share. Because then they realize that they've shot themselves.